the utterly devastating and tragic killing of Matt Ratana, Sergeant Matt Ratana, policeman in the Metropolitan Force who was custody officer, uh, we believe, at the holding centre in Croydon, South London, when a suspect who was brought in um, suddenly produced a gun from somewhere. It's not clear yet. It's been speculated that the gun was in his um, trouser belt behind his back. And even though his uh, hands appear to have been handcuffed behind his back, he somehow managed to get hold of this gun, um, started firing it. And the tragic consequence of that is the is the terrible death of Sergeant Matt Ratana, a man of whom hundreds of people already have spoken so highly of, a man who you could definitely say from everything that we've read, a genuinely decent uh, wonderfully kind, hard-working, salt-of-the-earth copper who did the job because he wanted to serve the community and put things right in life that were wrong, OK? And uh, it's, it's something that's going to affect the whole of the nation. It brings a pall of doom uh, down on us in times when things aren't good anyway. This just makes it worse. But this is very human, you know. You can't replace um, lives like uh, Sergeant Matt Ratana. One of these days, hopefully, the economy will recover, but n never will the family of, of Matt Ratana be able to recover. I'm delighted to say that I've got on the line now uh, Ken Marsh, who's chair of the Metropolitan Police Federation, to give me an update and, and, and uh, reaction response to this appalling tragedy. Ken, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Good evening. Yeah, thanks very much indeed, Ken. Uh, look, the first thing I want to say in this is that I've just tried to sort of briefly outline what we think the circumstances were uh, leading to this terrible killing. One thing I don't want now is, you know, um, people sort of banging the drum and demanding an immediate inquiry, what went wrong, who got it wrong, who was responsible. My view is, Ken, having worked in my business for like 30 years and having dealt with a lot of police situations all the time, is that every day that dawns could bring a new challenge to any set of policemen in a way they've never been challenged before because that's the nature of the job and I reckon this incident was another example of that and I reckon you'd be absolutely correct um, the speculation that went around yesterday involving how my colleague was tragically taken from us was unprecedented yes. unnecessary yes. and it, it didn't hit the version at all of what actually had happened. Mm. Uh, my colleagues who brought the individual into custody did absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever. No. Um, and that will bear out uh, when the facts are relayed. And, and the thing about this is the facts will all come out mm. because we are completely transparent. Exactly. Um, someone has the opportunity to hide something because, again, the public don't quite understand. With a stop and search, we have the power to pat you down and look in your pockets. Yeah. We don't have the power to look in intimate areas of your body. Mm. You mm. have to be brought to a custody suite, has to be authorised by the custody sergeant, then you're taken to a cell, still in handcuffs, yeah. and you are stripped, yeah. naked. Yeah. And that's how we find things that we find. Mm. And, you know, it, it's quite bizarre that, that this horrific incident that took place yesterday has been played out by so many people who know absolutely nothing about policing. About Exactly, yeah. about how we yeah. do our job and what we do. And my poor colleagues who are all involved in this are human beings. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I remember uh, as a young reporter, um, Ken, I was sent to Toxteth in Liverpool to yeah. uh, cover what were then unprecedented scenes of civil disorder in this country, OK, the Toxteth riots. Yeah. Do you know that the police who turned up there turned up in the same sort of uniform they'd be wearing yeah. if they were walking through a park. They didn't have any shields, they didn't have any helmets, they literally didn't have batons, they, they had nothing, and they had to turn up and try and protect themselves and protect the public against a mob, and I mean a mob of two or 3,000 people throwing petrol bombs, um, uh, hijacking cars, setting fire to them, pushing them down the hill and all that kind of stuff. And that's what I mean by the fact that every day could bring a new challenge to a policeman, and Absolutely. I'm fed up to the back teeth of people saying, well, they should have seen this coming. You can't see that sort of thing coming, can you? No, not at all. And, you know, this is what we all sign up to. This is, you know, this is what we, we all prepare ourselves for as yep. police officers. We are quite unique in, in the way that uh, we, we perform and the way that we deliver to the public. But, you know, when something like this happens, mm. it, it triggers off all sorts of emotions and feelings for my colleague because yep. we are a family and we are very close. And, it, you know, 
we, we don't want to lose anyone in any circumstances, and none of my colleagues would, would have allowed anything to happen yeah. that would allow something like this to take place. Yeah. It was just a complete freak what yeah. happened. I, I, I totally agree. But what does it say about the way that British society is going? I well, mean, for instance, Ken, your, your members now have additional responsibilities because of COVID-19. Um, mm-hmm. Budgets for, you know, the police from the Home Office are under pressure all the time. I mean, are we getting a, a fair representation from the police of, um, of what they need to be doing? And are they getting the resources to do it? Well, it's a real difficult one. I haven't got a couple of hours to answer your question because I'd need it. But yeah. in a nutshell, you know, we are pushed from pillar to post on a, on a minute-by-minute motion throughout 24 hours. We are at the beck and call of the government for everything now that they seem to mm. think the police should be there for. And, and we are, as you quite rightly say, the thin blue line. We've been yeah. eroded yeah. To, to such a point that, you know, it, it now becomes farcical at times that we have to deliver. I mean, on, on top of what happened yesterday, just yeah. put it in perspective, we still had 3,000 people demonstrating at Trafalgar Square today, yes. assaulting my colleagues and causing chaos. Yeah. So, yeah. This, this is every day for us. It's madness. Yeah, it should have been banned. Those, the, the, those sort of demonstrations under the current um, situation in this country should be banned. I, I don't, you know, I don't think people should be chaining themselves to streets, uh, sticking themselves to vehicles with glue. Um, the one that I really, really dislike is when these people go what's called floppy, which you'll know all about, and it takes five yeah. officers to pick them up off the floor and put them into a vehicle to take them away, where they later get released because we don't have the means to keep them so i understand exactly what the demands on the police are is is this country getting more violent uh yeah. ken or is this just a a, a a a horrendous you know breaking bad type uh horror no it is getting more violent sadly and you can let those out with your thoughts on my colleagues mm. they're running this year at about five and a half thousand um um, and we're talking about serious assaults. We're not talking about, you know, yeah. uh, bumps and bruises. We're talking about real serious stuff. Yeah. The level of aggression towards the police nowadays yes. is unprecedented. And I, I've been around a long time, and I've never, ever seen what they have to put up with now on such a constant basis. Yeah. And everyone thinks, you know, I'm sorry, not everyone, because that's unfair. The vast majority of the public yeah. are, are law abiding. But yeah. there's a small fraternity who behave like this towards the police. Think they can do it with impunity and do what they like. Yeah, well, as you quite rightly say, the vast majority of these people are on the police's side, Ken. We, we we support the blue line. I just think that sometimes the, politic- the politicians need a bit more backbone to say, look, uh, bad people are bad and good people are good. And our job is to try and protect the good people from the bad people without us getting mixed up in, you know, socio-political sort of situations. Ken, thanks very much indeed. That's Ken Marsh, uh, chair of the Metropolitan Police Federation, reacting, of course, to the horrendous uh, killing of Matt Ratana, Sergeant Matt Ratana in Croydon, South London, yesterday. Um, I mean, those... Fortunately, we don't see those sort of incidents in this country very often. We're a good, gentle country, you know. We're a good, law-abiding country. We're a country full of good people. And we've never gone down the road that America's gone down, where, you know, violent crime has become just the de rigueur for most of their big cities, most of their, you know, uh, metropolitan areas. We don't have that. I know that we have some horrendous crimes in this country sometimes, but fortunately not the level of anywhere else. This is the best country in the world to live in, and one of the reasons it's the best country in the world to live in is we've got the most civilised and least corrupt police force in the world, OK? And we should cherish that, and we should do everything we can to support that situation because we're so, so lucky to have it here in the UK. OK?